the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great Euphrates River over here. Now, here is, I'm glad that we have enough time. This is where we're going to get some really interesting doctrine, okay? And I'm going to give you something here which is interesting. And I'm going to give you something also. Uh, this forced me to do it. You know your pastor is not all for teaching something new, right? However, because of the question over here, there has to be a new proposal. So your pastor is going to teach something new here, okay, which is intensely interesting. But he's going to leave that as a theory. That way uh, he doesn't, uh, if it turns out to be wrong, it's not a wrong doctrine. Now some people, I just want to clarify this, and I've said this before too. I want people to get this. Some people, when they see me teaching the book of Revelation, they keep uh, accusing me of, you know, it's too theoretical it's too questionable, so it just makes it confusing and not clear. Well, you got to realize this. The book of Revelation is called a book of prophecy. Prophecy is not something where it's clear cut out and you see it plain as day and you understand it. Prophecy, you got to realize the prophets themselves yeah. who are prophesying didn't even understand. Amen, brother. So there is definitely a lot of guesswork over here. But here's the thing, if it's just a random guesswork, then that's dangerous. But if it's scriptural, yeah, brother, and not only that, where it's scriptural, where you're being safe about it as well, being open to, I'm open to correction about it. Yeah. It's a possibility. It's a theory. When you leave it out like that, then you don't have to be a heretic for teaching heresy. Yeah. See that? So that's what your pastor's been doing all this time. Things that are clear, he'll make sure it's clear. And he'll even use sarcasm if it's taught differently, which teaches heresy, Amen. such as dispensationalism, Amen. the hermeneutics, and then a pre-tribulation rapture, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. But then other stuff, he'll open it up to interpretation and say it's theoretical. So guess what? Now you don't have to accuse me of being arrogant then. It's like when I'm teaching something clear and concise and, pre and teach it, they accuse me of arrogance and you don't really know. How can you say you know? Nobody knows the Bible. And then when I say that there's something I don't know, you accuse me of being theoretical. I mean, I can't win either way, I, you know. I'll tell you how I'll win, though, is that if I meet up everybody's doctrines, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for me to teach something that suits your doctrine, which is why devotional preachers get away with everything, and they have large churches. Okay, now let's get down to the really interesting stuff, all right? So the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and once he pours out the vial, guess what? The water there was, thereof was dried up. So the great river Euphrates was dried up. Why? that the kings of the east might be prepared. So this was dried up so that somewhere over the east, these kings will come out. Now your pastor mentioned this at Revelation 9 and a lot of his others uh, end times teaching. So let's look at over here, okay? Let's look at Revelation 9. And then we're eventually going to go to Daniel 11. So look at Revelation 9. And then Daniel 11. Now, let me first say this. That's why it is, uh, I can say this with confidence. So this part is confident, not theoretical. You notice that because this is about the kings of the east might be prepared, so he pours out the judgment on Euphrates, that matches up directly with Revelation 9. See that? this vial. Revelation 9, 14. Saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Four angels were loose which were prepared for an hour, day, month, year to slay the third part of men. So four angels come out of Euphrates river to slay a third of the world. Okay, that's not, that's a lot, right? But look at the number. The number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, 000, and I heard the number of them. So that's like approximately 200 million. But where do they get these horsemen, this army from? It's, it's uh, if you, what direction? From the east. east. That's why, look at verse 12, it's from the east there. So at the east direction, where you look at the kings of the east, 
Think about countries that have the numbers. They do have the numbers. The East is the, the largest population number that you'll find. So you get China with its obvious millions. You got Russia. And then you also have India, etc. They've got millions and millions to make up for it. So look at this. This is near the end of the tribulation, this sixth vial, right? But you rewind to Revelation 9 in this sixth trumpet at Revelation 9, 13, the sixth trumpet. That's when that same event happens. Yeah. These two events are tied together. That's the same event. Yeah. That's why your pastor keeps telling you, which is, a, I say this confidently, not theoretically, you can't make Revelation a book of, it's a nice chronological order. No. You cannot do that. It's, it makes more sense because it's a revelation. That's the title of the book. God is revealing different ways of looking at it. Amen, See, preacher. that's what's going on. So John, look at what happens here. John, look at what happens here. God is showing him so many different points of view that are all over everywhere. Yeah. That's what revelation is, see? Especially prophecy, it's a book of prophecy. And when you read prophecy throughout the Old Testament, you do know, as a matter of fact, truth, biblical rule of hermeneutics, you can't put that in chronological sequence or order. It's all over prophecy, the timelines. You can jump timelines, you can rewind timelines. That's what you can do. So notice over here that within the sixth trumpet, <clears throat> we also have the sixth vial coming out. See that? But these uh, seven vials are at the end of the tribulation. And then we see that the trumpets your pastor showed earlier, there are some that we could point out to be earlier as well. So we could see some trumpets here that are earlier. And then we see that whether it's one or a couple trumpets, I really don't know. But I do know this, that sixth trumpet, when we reach number six over here, that it would reach that sixth vial. See that? And then the seventh trumpet, we see over here that it's near the end where it's done. And then we got the seventh seal which doesn't make it any better, this seventh seal unleashes what? All of this. Why? Because the seventh seal is not at some timeline. It's an overview. And then you got the other seals before it. That's at the beginning of the tribulation. So see, that's why you see more and more that your pastor, he leaves out a, a longer timeline for the tribulation than just three and a half because a lot is already going on at three and a half and you can see there's something that has to be earlier inserted over here. So that's why you cannot put this in chronological sequence. There's so many things going on all over when you compare the scriptures. So there could be some trumpets during the seven vials, or it could be just the sixth trumpet, and then all these vials are occurring. So it could be either or. Now, now that we understand this, it shows that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. They're preparing. Why? Because if you look at verse 13, 14, and, uh, 13 and 14, it's so those kings can be in battle against God. They have an army. That matches with Revelation 9. They have that army going out that's prepared. Okay, but here's a question though, okay? In Revelation 9, here's something that's interesting. So God pours out the vial and dries up the Euphrates River, okay? So le let me show you the se Let me show you uh, the sequence over here uh, on how this is going. So pay attention. This is, uh, I'm going to show you the sequence of what's happening, okay? And this one is going to be a possible theory. So this part is theoretical when I'm combining Revelation 9 and Revelation 16. Okay. What's going on is this. The angel pours out the sixth vial, dries up the Euphrates River. As soon as the Euphrates River dries up, Revelation 9, what happens is 
Because that river is dried up, that's why you can open up hell. And because you can open up hell, the four angels can come out of there. That's why your pastor mentioned the four angels of Tartarus, right? That could be siding up with China, right? And Russia. That's what your pastor mentioned. So there could be four fallen beings that come out of here, and then they assemble China and all the other countries of the East, and they have the numbers. So then, <clears throat> this army comes out and wipes out a third of the world. Now, the Antichrist is ruling over the world. So this army is actually hurting the Antichrist kingdom. So what in the world? Why would that happen? Because, remember, your pastor mentioned in Revelation 6, there are still some nations who would not submit to the United Nations, to the Antichrist United Nations, to his European Union. And guess what? We're already seeing that right now. What are the countries we see that is not really complying with how the EU or the UN is doing things? A lot of people talk about Russia and then China and then the other communist allies. And this also include its Muslim partners, Muslim allies. That's why Gog and Magog will fit either a Muslim area or a communist area. That's why it's Gog and Magog. They come out at the book of Ezekiel and Revelation chapter 20. So what's going on over here is that these four fallen angels come out of hell. And what do they do with those kings of the east? They empower them. They either demon possess them and there's something spiritually going on where they transform or they give them their own demonic armies or there's some kind of hybridization that's going on mingling with technology, biology, and demons. All right? So these three could possibly happen. So why? Because when you read Revelation 9, it's not a normal army of 200 million. These are devils. And they're like a mixture of all sorts of animals too. So that's why there could be a hybridization going on. Or it could be the devils of hell itself that came loose. Or it could be something where something spiritually happened, where these fallen angels just spiritually possessed them, demon possessed them, that they transformed into something. See? So that's what's going on, and then they wipe out the whole army. All right, the Antichrist, he's ruling over the world and conquering and to conquer. Why? Revelation chapter 6 says that. So look at Daniel 11. That's the one we didn't look at now, right? So remember, I'm explaining you the sequence already so far. Now let's see what happens next. Daniel 11. Daniel 11, we know that the <coughs> king of the north is referring to the Antichrist, which is a Syrian region, and he's Jewish. That's why the Antichrist is a Syrian Jew and Roman Catholic by religion, which is why he can meet all three groups of, uh, of the Jews, the Islam, and Catholicism. Because of ethnicity and religion, he can meet three groups. But let's look at this one now. So we see that at verse 36, 37, 38, we know that those are the verses referring to the Antichrist, right? Okay, now look what this Antichrist does. You'll notice that at verse mm, 43, but he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver and over all the precious things of Egypt and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. So he's got the Muslims involved here. That's why we see uh, Muslim, uh, the Antichrist, he does have a good number of Muslims who will be on his side, even though there might be some Muslims who will go rogue on him, which is what, which is what explains his assassination, right? So uh, it also explains a side where the, he did recruit a good number of Muslims, not just against him, but for him, because of beheading the tribulation saint, right? And I mentioned some interesting uh, in references to the false prophet too, right? Okay, and anyway, even if you study the religion of Islam, you got to realize this, is that when you study the religion of Islam, there are uh, factions that are really against each other and call each other heretics, and they'll even kill each other. Why? Because that's how messed up the religion is. <laughs> Okay, but aside from all that, so that's why it's very possible you can have some for the United Nations and others who are against it. Now, he's got the Muslims on his side at verse 43, and perhaps he even conquers some of them. 
But look at verse 44. But tidings out of where? The east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. See that? So something happens at the east. Remember the Antichrist, he's, uh, so it looks like what's going on is that he's conquering and to conquer, but then he gets tidings out of the north. Remember, he's the king of the north, and that's Syria, right? So something goes back over with his homeland, his birthplace, so to speak, and then something goes on at the east. Why? You get a third of the, the, the world wiped out over there. So he's trying to go back and get it back in order again. So what happens is he goes back over there, gets it back in order, and when he gets back in order, that's why when you look at Revelation 16, they're all in it together at Armageddon to battle against God. So look at Revelation 16. Verse 13, notice the Antichrist and the satanic trinity, false prophet dragon, get involved to summon all those kings of the east. Verse 14 See, they go around the kings of the east, but not just the east, but what? The whole world. So they're summoning the east and then the whole world, why? To battle against God at Armageddon. That's what's going on. So that's your pastor's theory on the sequence of what's happening at Revelation 9, Revelation 16, and Daniel chapter 11. That's the best way that I can uh, harmonize those three. It makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, I am definitely open to a different interpretation. Okay, that was fun. We have to stop there. 13, 14, 15, there's a lot of other gold. So I'll explain those uh, next week.